welcome. Today we're gonna be going through the one mar one man army summoner. This is a really fun build. You can play by yourself, you can play it with friends. Don't play it with friends, actually. Your friends are gonna hate you for this. <laughs> you're gonna be playing most of the fights just by yourself, while your your allies are gonna be just waiting for you to end your turn. So don't do that. But it's really fun. It can summon up to 21 summons. And you can also be turn turn into a, a summon yourself, right? You can turn into a dinosaur or an owl bear or a displacer beast if you want to. The summons it can get is around 21. And it's just you. So let's get straight to it. If you enjoy the content, please drop a like, drop a subscribe, and let's get straight to it. For stats, make sure you have high intelligence and wisdom. You can't use the band of intelligence. So we have to have at least a 16 intelligence. Level, start as a druid. And at level 2, go for sports druid. This will give us down the line the fungal infestation ability. At level 6, we get fungal infestation, which will allow us to raise more corpses and at level seven we get this unique druid spell conjure woodland wing this is why we're taking seven levels in druid alternatively you could have gone with six druid and six necromancy this would give you one more undead with your animate dead however this way you get two summons because you are getting the woodland woad and the dryad and get one level in wizard at level 8. You could even get this level earlier, but I wouldn't get it before level 6. Definitely pick Find Familiar. I would also pick Shield and Long Strider. Long Strider is important because you're going to be casting this on all of your summons because it's free movement speed. And then we continue as Druids. So, trick number one. First of all, you can pick up bodies and store them in your chest at the camp. And then whenever you need extra bodies for your summons, you can just drop them down. And this way, you don't have to worry about running out of corpses. We're going to go through the sources, the resources, the resource, the resource for each summon, the type, and the, number of, and the number of summons that we get. Right? So first of all, we have Dance Macabre. This is from the Necromancy of Thay. You can do this once per long rest. And it gives you four ghouls. So let's do that. Pop, four ghouls. We get four zombies with fungal infestation. Druid zombies hit someone. They can give them crawling no, which what effectively means is that when a target dies, they are resummoned as a zombie, but only for 10 turns. Then we have Animate Dead, which we will use a level 6 spell slot to get 3 more ghouls. If we were a Necromancer, we would be getting one more ghoul right here, uh, or Skeleton, excuse me. However, we wouldn't be able to, to get the Woodward down the line, because we would need 7 levels in Druid and you need 6 levels in Wizard to get this. So it's your choice what you want to do. So what we will be doing is using it to cast the highest possible levels. You can also get flying ghouls or regular ghouls. They're much stronger than skeletons. You might be able to get one more summon if you go for the skeletons, but I don't think it's worth it because the ghouls are really, really strong. I look at all these ghouls. Right now we have, well, four zombies and seven ghouls right now. <laughs> and we've just started. So we can also get either a deva or a cambion now how do you get the cambion you have to use the infernal rapier which you can get from will's quest line i'm not gonna spoil more on that and that will allow you to summon a planar, planar ally cambion pretty simple very easy to do if you have will in your party however if you want to be able to summon a deva which in my opinion is the strongest summon is it it's not as strong as having a lot of ghouls, but it's really a strong summon. It's probably one of the strongest summons. What you can do is, as a wizard, because you have a level in wizard, right? You can learn this spell, Sides of the Sealy Summon Deva. Level 5 spell, and it gives you access to a level 6 Cleric Summon. This is crazy good. And you can do this once per short rest, but it does take a level 5 spell slot. 
Now, how does this work? Effectively, what you do, you get the scroll and you read it with a level one wizard, but you need to have a level five spell slot. So you don't have to be a level 10 wizard to learn the scroll, but you need to have a level five spell slot and one level of wizard. And then you can just learn any spell that is level five. Let me just show you right now, this is a level six spell. I can just learn it even though I'm only one level of wizard. So you learn this spell and then you can just use a spell slot to summon it. Pretty simple. The problem is that you cannot both have the Cambion and the Dev out. You have to choose. Next, if we have the Cambion, we have the Dev out. So it's one of the two, so this only counts as one. So I'm just going to put zero here because I'll always go for the Deva. But if your Deva dies and you don't have any more spell slots, you can always summon a Cambion to continue. Then you can use Create Undead, but you would need to find a scroll and learn it and cast it as a wizard. However, there's also a ring that allows you to do that. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the ring. So we're <laughs> our army is growing. <laughs> and... Then we have Conjure Elemental. You can go for a level 5 spell slot to get an Elemental or a level 6 spell slot to get a Myrmidon. Now, because we've already used our spell slot once, our level 6 spell slot, what we can do is we can get, where is it? This spell cracks Amulet. Equip it on our character. And then we can use the ability to restore a spell slot. Also, there is a Tadwell ability called Free Cast, which you can use when summoning something. So if I click on, if I go to my passives, click on Free Cast, and then go to my level six spell slots, then I can use and summon an elemental for free without losing a spell slot. So as you will see right now, I'd rather go for the Myrmidons, and I do recommend going for the Air Myrmidon because it can turn invisible and it can stun the enemy while the rest don't have great CC, crowd control effects. Water Elemental is also... Uh, Water Elemental is probably my favorite from the Elementals. Maybe Earth Elemental is second, because it can knock enemies prone. But it's, it needs to be said here, because you're going to have a lot of summons, you're going to struggle to get them all to hit enemies. So any summon that can do rage damage, so you might even want to give up three, the, um, the animate dead ghouls to get skeletons to shoot from a distance because that will increase your damage and make it easier for you to fight. But for now, I'll get the air Myrmidon. So minor elementals. If you want to go for maximum summons, you should be going for Memphis. It doesn't get any benefits from being upcasted. You can either go for Mad Memphis or Ice Memphis. The Azer is only one summon. It has a pretty high armor class, but I definitely prefer the Ice Memphis. They also have a ranged attack, and we need ranged attacks as we talked about. Wait, why is it just one? Did it get nerfed? No, it's two. It's just that they're on top of each other. Okay. Okay, so now we have our <laughs> Mad Memphis. This is just one character, guys. <laughs> Can you imagine if you did this on six characters, what would happen? Uh, and as I said, they have a ranged attack, which is pretty cool. Then we have Find Familiar. Now, for Find Familiar, you can also get Scratch, Us, or Boo, if you're using Minsk. Or you can get the regular familiars, or even the Quasit if you read the scroll. However, you can only have one out at a time, so I'm just going to put out the raven here. But you can choose whatever you like. I like the ravens because they can blind enemies. And there's also um, some gloves that allow you to summon this. But if you summon both together, one of them goes away, so there's no point in going through that. Then we have the Summon Dryad. What I really like about the Dryad is that it has this Aura effect, Nature Step, which makes allies and around it resistant to poison. Now also what it can do, oh my god, we're starting to lose track of... Let me click it. Okay. So what this one can do, it can also summon its Fallen, fallen Lover, so you're effectively getting two summons for the price of one. 
as you can see and i will move it as you can see everybody's getting buffed around it it's vulnerable to fire i think so be careful with that uh with fire spells around it so we got two more two more two more summons from it because it's the wood world and the dryad and we covered the spore summons so what is up left so what we're gonna use now is called an it is an item that you can get in act two which is called the shadow lantern this item allows you to summon a shadow elemental so let's summon the elemental perfect now it may not look like it but you can actually move this around and this is actually pretty strong 60 hp and it can do 2d8 plus 2d4 and strength drain the enemy it cannot blink though oh my god and i love the way that it moves you can't see it unless until it attacks and then it yeah really cool really cool really cool sound so we've covered everything that lasts indefinitely and now we're gonna look at what is left that is temporary so second marriage mage hunt and flaming sphere and let's start with mage hunt that's a country trip i'm getting an extra summon right here now let's use the second marriage which is a wand you can get in act one it allows you to summon an extra zombie <laughs> look at this uh-huh Connor Winder, oh, he has good HP. Connor Winderblad. Anyway, it's pretty weak, but it's a, it's an, it's an, it's an additional summon, right? And finally, we have spiritual weapon. Now, if you wanna be able to cast spiritual weapon, oh shit. Let's leave turn. Let's let's leave the turn-based combat and let's enter it again. There is this weapon, the Seathan, which can summon a spiritual weapon. You could alternatively go for three levels of cleric. So you could just read a scroll of Conjure Elemental and cast it as a wizard in the future and just get three levels of cleric so that you can summon spiritual weapon by yourself. But with your bonus action this is not concentration but you can only have one spiritual weapon out at a time what is cool about this is that it's being summoned at the sixth level spell so it actually does 3d8 yeah plus six bludgeoning damage <laughs> so yeah we have a lot of summons right now and finally you can choose between the grasping vine or the flaming sphere flaming sphere will follow you around the Grasping Vine will not. And here it is. It's actually pretty weak. It, it dies very, very easily. You need to cast it during combat. It's concentration. I would say this is a pretty bad summon. I would rather get Flaming Sphere. But again, you don't really need Flaming Sphere. And it's a concentration. So I'd rather concentrate on anything else, really. Like Globe of Invul Invulnerability or many other very strong spells like haste so these are all the summons you can get so this is our army following us around in the city <laughs> things will start dying in a bit but as you can see there's a lot of them now when it comes to items i'll just give you a couple of, of tips I definitely recommend wearing the, the Circle of Bones. Also, there's two spells that I want to cover. You can cast Aid. I'm going to use Arcane Battery to save the spell slot. As a level 6, and this will increase the HP of all your summons. So, for example, the Ghoul has, this Ghoul has 64 HP. This Memphit has 21. When I do Aid, I've casted 89 and 46. So you can see that, especially with summons that have low health, like the, um, the Spore Druid Zombies, it, it went up for from 
how much HP was it? 9 HP, it went to 34. Finally, to conclude, what you should also be doing is casting Heroic, heroic Fist on them. This will effectively boost their HP by 12, give them um, immunity to poison, diseased, or frightened, and their HP increases by 12. And they have advantage on wisdom saving throws. So let's check that again. Again, from 89, we went to 101. And from 46, we went to 58. And here from 38, we went to... Here from 34 HP, we went to 46. So now everything here is pretty buffed up. All that would be left would be to cast Long Strider individually. This is a free spell because it's a ritual to all of them, so that they can... See, Mami has 170 HP, the Dryad now effectively has 60 HP, which earlier she only had much, much less, right? And you give them all Long Strider, and that way they're gonna be much more easier to maneuver on the battlefield. And that's it, guys, you get a lot of summons. And some summons are temporary, but many of them aren't. So you can see that they can be really, really strong. The Even the ghouls that started with 20 HP end up with 67 and resistance to all bludgeoning and types of damage. Now, there is also some gloves you can use that give resistance to magical damage, to all damage, but they increase their they There's a chance that these summons will go crazy for a turn or two however if they are heroes fisted thoroughly stuffed so if you did cast that spell on them they do have advantage on the save but you don't want them to be fighting amongst themselves so yeah this is the army guys let me know what you think um thank you for watching and if you enjoy the content drop a like drop a subscribe and yeah i'll see you in the next one